I want to just encourage your hearts today. As you, I ask you just to turn your Bible to the book of Zechariah chapter 4. And times like these, I could just see everybody turning to their concordance quickly, just to find out if there is a book called Zechariah. Uh, it is not Zacchaeus, it's Zechariah. Uh, it is way to the back, if you don't know, it's somewhere to the back. Keep shuffling those pages quickly, you'll find it right to the back. The back, the back. Yes, yes. Almost to the um, just before Malachi, you'll find Zechariah in the Old Testament. I want to still salute. I want to salute our, our bishop, thanking him for the opportunity to serve, and I want to encourage you to let's keep our bishop in 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 our prayer. Keep his family. He's doing a great job, and I would say. We must not come down. Amen. I want to read this scripture because I want to speak to, to the hearts of God's people today. And I'm taking from Zechariah chapter 4. I want to read from verse 6. Hear what it says. It says, So he answered and said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Verse 7. Who are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? You shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hands shall also finish it. Then, the word, then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. Permit me to just stop right there. I want to just talk a little bit on the topic, being blessed in a discouraging situation. How many of you know that you could be blessed even though you're going through a discouraging situation? And I'm speaking out of an experience today, an experience. I, I think most times I, you speak with a conviction when you're going through a situation. I tell you, this week has been a real, real situation for me. And it's when you're going through your tough times, it is easy to be discouraged. I don't know if any of you have ever faced that situation where you feel discouraged. But I want to talk to you because Zerubbabel came to that place where he was a starter, but he was not able to finish. And that's when you're stuck between starting and finishing. And when you're stuck right there, it is easy to become discouraged. Father, we thank you for your word today. I am declaring that we are blessed even in the midst of discouraging situations. Father, we are speaking victory to ourselves today. We are speaking victory to our spirits. We are speaking victory to every dead situation. Father, we are looking, oh God, at you. And Father, we are focusing on you today that you will strengthen us even when we have to go through those tough times, those depressing times. God, yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, God. God, I will fear no evil. There must be courage as we walk through these tough times. So, Father, I pray that your word will come true for someone today, that we will live here in courage. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. amen. Being blessed, even when you go through Difficult situation, discouraging situation. And I want to start by 
saying, to appreciate this text, you must understand exactly where it falls in, in terms of this man that is called Zerubbabel. The thing about Zerubbabel, you have to know, he's called to rebuild the walls, the walls of Jerusalem. And it is one thing to build a wall. It is another thing to rebuild a wall. To rebuild means that there was a wall there before. Sometimes I believe it is easier to build a wall than to rebuild a wall. Because it's when you have to rebuild, you have to break down certain things and really start again. And sometimes it is starting again that is a challenge. He is called to rebuild. I want you to think as well and to take note that not only is he called, but it was a call from the Lord. I am saying you can be called by God to do a task and still face discouragement. You can be called by God for an assignment. And while you're going through your assignment, you can be discouraged. So I turned to my wife and I asked, I said, sweetheart, tell me, what do you call a person who starts something and can't finish? And I'm looking forward. She said, she said yeah, yeah. Um, you call him Junior. <laughs> and I am looking. By the time she says that, I, I did not smile. But in the hearts of hearts, I understood what she was saying because that's who I am. I wonder how many of us could be honest and say, that's who I am. Oh, my goodness. I buy a book nearly every two months. My goodness. And I start the book. It never finish. Between me and you. I could never finish a book. By the time I start there, you know, son, it's because I get excited about something else. And halfway through the book, I start, I can't finish. And the truth is, many of us, even in Christendom, we are good starters, but we don't finish. Yeah. Let's be real. Yeah. We start off, eh? Hey, Pastor, I'm fasting with you, Pastor. Yes, yes, yes. And by the time the first three days, Pastor, yes, yes. Pastor, we'll try again next year. Hey, we could start. You're on your diet and hello, you're starting. I must reduce you. Yes, 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 yes. And by the time the third day, oh my goodness. Father, we're going to do this again next time, not this time. We can start, but we don't finish. How many of us start university? You start university. But something came up. Money, something, something. And you did not finish. You're owing gate. Once you're owing gate, it's because they didn't finish. <laughs> if you're owing gates, you don't put up your hand right now. But tell yourself, you are the person I'm speaking to. The point I'm bringing here is that many of us, we start, but... We do not finish. And it's right in the middle when you're able to start and you're unable to finish that you can become frustrated. You can come discouraged. You can become depressed. And I want to speak to those people today. Because I want you to know you can still have the victory in the midst of your discouraging situation. So Rubabel, he was one that God called. And the Bible says as God called him as a governor, he went and he started to rebuild the walls. He did two things. And it's, that's when you're a good starter. He immediately went and the Bible said that the first thing he did, he rebuilt the altar. Very good. I mean, that was God in operation. He was a man of purpose, pushing towards it. And then he, after he, he rebuilt the, 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 the altar, the next thing he did was to rebuild the foundation of the temple. That's awesome. You have the foundation down. But just when the foundation was done, 
the people around started to oppose him. And by opposing him, they opposed the workers. Eventually, the workers became so discouraged that they stopped doing the work of, the, of God on the temple and started to do the, their own work in building their own houses. Do you know it's quite possible that you can start good and end up bad? You start off with the things of God and eventually, you know what, you stop studying about the things of God, you know, studying more about your own personal business. Sad to say we have that kind of thing in our church today. That people are more concerned about their houses and their own dreams than that of the things of God. But I pray today that we would come back to that place where we would once again understand the scripture. Seek ye first. I want to say that. Seek ye first. The first priority, if you want to be blessed, is to put God first. That's where it starts. If you want to be blessed, put God first. So Ruba Bell. In two years time, he built the foundation and eventually discouragement stepped in to the point where for 10 years, nothing was done on the temple of God, in the house of God, nothing. The challenge that he has to face, how do I now get this impossible task done by 10 years you can imagine 10 years no work done that is like a seed that has died it's dead you have to start again to motivate to get people to go it's hard and I believe that even, you know, there's some of us, we have some dead dreams. Some of us, we, we have some, uh, some, 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 some things that God has placed, some goals that we have, and somehow it seemed to somehow die. Uh, I seem to be aborted. But I'm saying today, whatever God has placed in your heart, you can still accomplish God's divine purpose. You can do it. It's never too late to start. It's never too late to start again. And so, in the midst of it, God had to send a word. In the midst of Zerubbabel's situation. And God used the prophet Zechariah to bring that word. And this is what I want to tell you. If you want to really learn how to overcome discouragement, you have to learn, first of all, where the power of your strength lies your power your power to overcome discouragement where it lies and it starts right there in verse number six let's read verse number six here it was he says this is the word of the lord to zerubbabel and it goes not by might nor by power but by my spirit says the Lord of hosts he says the Rubabel understand in order for you to be successful in completing this task even though you discourage understand where your power lies it is not in your might don't think that it is isn't by your own power the challenge today is that we try to do things with our own strength and by our own ability. So you decide, I, 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 I could do this, man. I could do this. I, I go in and lose weight. I go in and lose weight. I, uh, you need to know it is not by might nor by power. You need to understand when a situation that God has given to you, hear me, and God has given you a dream, when you are placed in that situation, you will accomplish it not by your own strength. Hear what Jeremiah said. Jeremiah 9 and verse 23 around there. He says, he said, let not 
a wise man boasts in his wisdom. No, a strong man in his strength. No, a rich man in his riches. But let him that boasts, boast in this, that he knows and understands the Lord. Can I ask you, what do you make a boast in? Is it the fact that you have money? Is it the fact that you, you have a good job? Is it the fact that you have education and you have a PhD and a master's? What do you boast in? Hey, when you look at your children, hey, which child give you the most glory? The one that has all the education? Well, I want to tell you today that you should start to boast in the one that who knows the Lord. Because they that know the Lord shall be strong and do great exploits. The challenge today, we need to have a transformation of our minds. And instead of running after things, we need to run after God. Chase after God. And as you pursue God, he will bring all those things to pass. Zerubbabel so had to understand that in his self, in his, his own self, he is powerless. I want to even go further. Anything that is done without the help of the Holy Spirit is powerless and meaningless. You need to know the importance the Holy Spirit plays in everything that you do. Especially when God has given you a divine assignment. Yesterday, last week, sorry, we spoke about uh, what heaven is all about. It's what is done for God. Hey, at the end of the day, in order for you to accomplish what God has in store for you, you need the Holy Spirit. If you're operating today outside of the Holy Spirit, hear me, all you're doing is vain. And it's worth nothing. You need the Holy Spirit. So, the question is, why do I need the Holy Spirit? And I will tell you why. Because when the Holy Spirit comes, the Holy Spirit is able to teach you and to lead you into all truths. Jesus said that. He said, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will lead you into all truths. The Holy Spirit has a way that he grants you and he gives you wisdom. He gives you wisdom to deal with every situation. I am dealing with a situation and in the situation, I have to learn, hey, sometimes I need to know how to, how to put the words. When Nathan had to talk to David, he didn't say, hey, David, hey, you are wicked, so and so. He said, uh, king, there was a man who had a sheep. He used wisdom to the point where David could have identified with what he's saying. And David said, hey, tell me who is that wicked man who came and take that one man sheep. Tell me, I will deal with him. And he says, thou art the man. Sometimes you have to know how, how to bring across things. Not because you're vexed with that person. You just tell them what you think. You need the Holy Spirit even when you're angry. Amen. I'm closing my eyes. Because I know when people are angry, you know what they say? Pastor, you have no God in that. You have no God in that. Pastor, you have no God in that. No, no, no. You have no God in that. Huh? Can I see again? You need God in everything. Amen. The Bible said, be angry and sin not. When you are angry, you can, that's the time you need God. Because if you don't put God in there, you will abuse people. You will cuss them and when you finish, you shame. You will bring down your family and bring down yourself if you don't put God in the center of your situation. But the Holy Spirit is also important because the Holy Spirit has a way that he speaks words of faith to you 
especially when you're discouraged the holy spirit come because you see the holy spirit the bible said no man knows the thing of a man other than his spirit and no man knows the true heart of god other than the spirit of god so when the spirit of the lord comes he who knows the deep things of god and you're going through a tough time he comes with a word to say hello it's not by might it's not by power but it's by my spirit that you would succeed. Amen. Isn't it great when you could hear a word from the Lord? Yes, I mean, let me, I tell you, I am, I am candid. I am very candid. We're home and, again, new house, you know, it seems like we have a problem with, you know, the runoff. So what is happening is that Something is blocking it, and while we're blocking it, it starts to pile up, and it comes out, especially in our laundry. So it happened one time, we call in the plumber, call in. it happened a second time, calling the plumber. And this thing only happening every time I have gas. So my mom just did a surgery on her eyes Friday, and they're there, and Saturday, the devil shows up. Problems to the point where I am not doing anything. Have you ever got so upset your, that you know when you're upset is the time you do say nothing? So I'm just walking, I'm not saying anything. And in my mind, I'm saying, God, I can't stand this nonsense. I mean, I mean, I mean, it's a new house. What is the problem? Nobody else seems to have this problem. And I'm there. And I remember going into the kitchen. And I said, you know, I turned to my parents and said, look, I'm really sorry, but we have to try to put you on a plane, send you back, because nobody could, you can't use the bathroom, you can't do it. Doesn't make sense. So, took them to the airport. And I came back and I'm now, you know, washing my, you know, the, the things, uh, go feed the dog. And this week was so bad, I lost my favorite dog, one of my favorite dogs, my top dog that was given to me by Elder Sunil. I mean, big, nice dog, died. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm mourning off my dog, and this is happening. So things really not going too good this week. And in the midst of it, I just, like a, a word, just came on the inside of me. And immediately, I said, Lord, I thank you. Because, you know, when the Holy Spirit could speak to you, and it's simple words, simple words. And the simple word was, everything will be all right. As simple as that. Everything will be all right. And I stopped. And then a scripture from Isaiah came to me, encouraging my heart. And I said, look, that's the beauty about the Spirit of the Lord. He comes in in the midst of your discouragement and he gives you a word of encouragement yeah. so that you can even encourage yourself in the Lord. Yeah. Sometimes I don't know how people could live without the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes on the inside. And I mean, in the midst of there, I just say, Lord, thank you. I don't know why, but I'm saying thank you. Lord, thank you. This has to work out for my good. God, I'm thanking you. Because I know you're going to work this thing out for my good. I don't know how you're going to finish, but what I know is going to finish well. God going to deal with that. And I'm saying to somebody while you're going through, sometimes this, the problem is while you're going through, how can I have faith? How can I be encouraged? You need to understand that the Holy Spirit is what you need. Because he would guide you. He would lead you. And the beauty about the Holy Spirit, he would take you sometimes into the dry bones. And while you're there, while before life comes to those bones, you'll start to hear a shaking. You'll start to hear, hey, I'm moving. You'll see it. And bones start to just suddenly react. Why? Because you would speak a word and things will happen. Amen. The power of the Holy Spirit. Do not, do not underestimate the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. The second thing I want you to look at is the fact that 
he says to him, as he goes down, he says, Who are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? You shall be, become a plain, and he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. Let me tell you something. You have to understand the power. And I call it the power of God's promise. The power. I say, you know what? I have to learn. And it's something I'm, I'm going to do. I haven't done it as yet. But the Holy Spirit laid on my heart. I am starting to learn the power of the capstone. Capstone. The power of the capstone. And this is the power of the capstone. Now the capstone is the, it's the final stone that you put on a building. It's a final stone that you put. And what the, the Spirit of the Lord said to, 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 to Zerubbabel, He said, I want you to take that capstone and I want you to put it in front of your face so that you could see it. Sometimes when you're going through a discouraging situation, you need to take the capstone. The thing that speaks to the completion of a thing and put it in front of your face. What do I, what, Pastor, what are you talking about? Let me, let, me, let, me, let me bring it down. Let me bring it up. Sometimes, if you believe that, hello, God is saying to you that you will have your degree. You probably just need to go to the university and buy a jersey, write in UE, and stick it up in front of your, in front of your cupboard. God say you're going to get a house, you go and buy, hello, your, your keychain for your, for your keys, for your house. And you have it, and you put it in a place where, hey, every time I pass, I see it. So you know what? I, can be, I tell you, pastor is very candid. A sister came, two precious sisters that we love so dearly, came. And she said to me, pastor, are you in work? I said, yes. Come, I have something for you. I said, okay. She came. In fact, she bought it, a white bag, white grape. Wow. She said, thanks, 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 thanks. I said, appreciate it. She said, okay. And she said, well, open it now. I said, open it. When I open it, it was a nice baby boy clothes. Oh, <laughs> a baby boy clothes. She said, pass. I said, I said, what are you doing, girl? A baby boy. Say, Pastor, God tell me to bring that for you. When God talk, I don't say nothing. I said, thank you, thank you. Thing. And I put in as I said, hello, God really had to talk to Sister Benji too. <laughs> so I carried and I tell her, look, hey, look, this is what 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 somebody brought. And she sees it and she laughs. I said, well, thank you, it's a laugh. You understand? When you, you, you laugh, that's good. So I said, all right. In my mind, I say, while I'm reading this thing, Spirit will say, I will take that and hang it up right above your cupboard. As you pass, consciously or subconsciously, you must just see it. And you see, the thing about it is that when you put the capstone in front of your face, what happens is that you become what you behold. After a while, that which is in front of your face comes inside of you and become part of you. Yeah. And I heard Joel Osteen said it. He said, look, you, you find what is in front of your face, you find yourself moving towards. You need to put some things in front of your face. In your library, put what you want. Hey, whatever God said. If God said it, I'm going to put it up there. And let me, there are those that might laugh at you. Let them laugh. But let me tell you, as you put it, you walk towards it. And you would see that your God will make a way where there is no way. He said, the God that, he, that started it is able to cause him to finish it. Whatever God says to you, you need to start to just get radical. Say, devil, hello, I am putting it there because God says it. 
And sometimes it might take a while before it comes to pass. But let me just tell you, be as, as true as God lives. Hear me, if God says it, he shall do it. I don't want to lie. It could be in 2000. My wife is better with these. It could be probably 2005, six, around there. In Daybreak Assembly, even okay, 2007, uh, we were there. And that year, the theme was yes, yes. And they gave me the opportunity to share. And God gave me that. He said, give out plates to everybody. And in the center, you will write yes. And right around the plate, so the inner part, you will write yes. And right or wrong, I want you to write everything that you want God to do for you. Just write it. Write it. And then you bring the plate up and we pray it on it. My wife obeyed. Well, as the pastor, you in front, you ain't writing nothing. And he obeyed. And we pray. And I want to tell you, every single thing that we wrote on the plate. I'm talking everything. The last thing to be done was that we wanted a child. That was the last thing. And so it was done. I am talking well over probably six, seven years later. But I'm saying some things might take a while. But if you serve the same God that I serve, if God says yes, no man could say no. And therefore... I've learned to have a confidence in God. That when God tells me to do things that make no sense, like taking my little boy, boy clothes and putting him up there, I say, Jamak Caleb Benjamin is on his way. Yeah. Oh, man. you got to call them, name them, claim them, and just watch them come to pass. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Somebody said, I came to me and said, Pastor, I see a little black boy like you running behind you. I said, well, I hope he fairer than me. But nevertheless, it doesn't matter. Let him come. Amen. The point I'm saying, you got to have some form of faith in God and do something that does not even make sense by putting the capstone in front of your face. He said, hey, take the end product, put it in front there, and just keep doing the work that I've called you to do. The last thing is this. I, I was reading, and verse 10 is the last thing as I close that I, I found was very interesting. He says, for who has despised the days of small things? Who has despised the days of small things? And right there is where I want to stop. If you're going to move forward in the midst of discouragement, you must not despise small beginnings. Many of us, we want the big things. Many of us, we're looking for, hey, I, I want this and I want it. No, hey, sometimes you have to thank God for the small things. Every tree starts with a seed. How many of us, we are thankful for the seed? I don't know. I tell people, hello, I will be a millionaire. But you don't wait until you're a millionaire to give. I start to give now like if I'm a millionaire. Yes. I'm, you have to start to be generous. You think if you were not generous now when you become a millionaire, you would be, you would be still stingy. <laughs> you would be a stingy millionaire. But you have to learn to be generous now. Because as you give, the Bible says, give, and it shall be given unto you. Before you can get, you have to learn to. And I believe that this is what God is saying. Take the little you have. Give it. Give it. Give it. Give it. Give it. 
the little time you have, I don't have much time, but the little I have, and when you, my wife, she says, come on, you have to balance a little bit more, because every time, if I'm not in Bible school, I'm, I'm with the youths, if I'm not with the youths, hello, I'm with the men, if I'm not with the men, I'm in church, hear me, the time I have, for the Lord. I'm giving what I have to the Lord. To the Lord. And when you see God start to bless me, don't say that's why I don't like to give, you know, because the pastor taking it. It's not the pastor taking your money. It's God blessing me because I am giving. I am giving. I sacrifice. I give everything I have to him. And God blesses that which you give. Understand, little is much when God is in it. Do you remember that little boy with five loaves, two fish? Five loaves, two fish. Little. It's a boy's lunch, not even a man's lunch, a boy's lunch. But that little was sufficient in the hand of Jesus to feed 5,000. Don't underestimate the little you have. Because the little you have is a seed to your harvest. If we can appreciate that, you will learn to just be motivated to use what you have for the honor and glory of God. And watch God go to work with it. More and more. I recognize this and I'm closing here. In order for you to prosper like a seed, it must die. When you put that seed on the ground, it must die. The time that that seed is in the ground, you see nothing while you're watering it. You don't know if it will bring forth. You, you could be watering, watering. And like Jim, last week I talked about, you didn't see anything. But the thing about it, once it's a good seed and you water it, what gives you the hope is your expectation. When I plant the seed, I'm expecting it after a while to come up, to shoot up. Likewise, when you have a dream, I believe that every dream goes through that dead situation, that dead time. When it seemed like it, everything not making sense, everything is going wrong, hey, and it seemed like, look, it may, hey, Lord, I just feel like giving up. It's in the midst of that. You need to remain faithful and water your seed. Don't abort it. Don't give up. Water it. Remain faithful. Faithful to God, faithful to prayer, faithful to his word, and allow the seed to go down. I had to bury my, my dog, and it was a trying time. When I had to pronounce the final rites, which I didn't have the time because, but my brother-in-law and I had to start to dig the grave. So we dig the grave, and while we're there, there was some roots right where Rocky is supposed to have his burial ground. And we are trying hard to get past the roots. And we chopping thing, and these roots, I tell you, the roots just, it will not break. And I'm saying, my goodness, somehow, in order, this tree that has been there and looking so, in order for it to look good, the roots went deep. And the roots thick. And I'm saying, Lord, when the Bible said that we ought to be rooted and grounded in God, you know, some of us like grass, you just pull us and we come out. No, but we ought to be so grounded that, hey, you're unmovable, unshakable. Because you're so in the word that even when tough time come, 
my roots have gone so deep down that I can pull from the deep things of God and still look good. It is when we get to that place that our seed has gone all the way down that when it comes up, my goodness, you know that what you're getting is a strong tree. A tree that has been planted by the rivers of waters. And I want to encourage somebody that is going through your tough times. Why are you going through your tough times? Tell yourself, God is allowing you to carry your roots deep. It's going down deep. So that when you are able to draw from those tough times. Oh my goodness. And you come up. My goodness. You're able to draw, and just like the word of God, not only Zerubbabel, you would start the foundation, but the hand that caused you to start will cause you to finish that which God has planted. All heads bow, all eyes close.